Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Okay, moving on to a lot more toxic uh, things. Uh, the, uh, the nearly yearling uh, Lupogasters uh, will need, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to, well. See what happens with this walnut substrate is when it gets wet, it actually sort of molds and gets nasty. So we're going to do a substrate change on these. And these, of course, are highly lethal at this size. Um, you know, if you got bit by the pygmy rattlesnake or one of the insularis, uh, it would be a very bad, uh, uh, bad couple of days. Uh, uh, you get bit by one of these, and you're definitely going to the hospital for any event. Uh, the chances of getting a dry bite from one of these uh, is very, very low. Uh, they don't mess around, so we don't mess around uh, with them. These are captive hatched and bred here at the lair. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of people that really appreciate uh, uh, Echis in the U.S. except people who have venom labs and uh, uh, such um, because the venom is quite uh, an interesting compound for medical research um, and there's one lab that uses leucogaster venom uh, they're a supplier for venom for uh, a, uh, a company that produces anti-venom for Africa uh, out of Spain called InnoSerp. Um, it's a very, very effective, very well-respected anti-venom with, and it uses venoms from several uh, species of snake depending on the kind of InnoSerp anti-venom that you, you stock or have. There's a Pan-African that sort of covers the many, many species. It, it actually has, you know, uh, has, uses venom from several species of Echis as well as a few species of Bitis and Naya and uh, Dendroaspis, the Mambas and such. And uh, uh, my friends at the uh, African Snake Bite Institute, uh, uh, George, um, Nick Brandehoff and uh, Ben Abo and stuff, when they go to Africa, they, they use this antivenin from Innocerp to treat bites. It uh, is very well tolerated by the patient and very, very effective uh, against uh, a variety of African snakes. Uh, this one looks like it probably, although the tail is a bit long, I think it's probably a, a female. Um, and because it eats really well, that would be another indication. Now let's not go running off into the sunset. You don't want to play snake hot meat. See, here's your bin. There's your furniture. Um, nothing bad happened to you. Uh, we'll put in a little bit of water later. Um, a lot of times I don't even put in water dishes for these guys. I'll just spray the walls of the uh, bin down uh, just to uh, just to make sure that they, hello, oh, you're, you, you think it's feeding time. I'm very sorry to disappoint you. Now this one really prefers frozen thawed geckos and not, uh, um, not mice like the others. 
one, three, and four uh, prefer uh, will easily take pinks. This one used used to take mice, but now has decided all of a sudden I'm going to be picky and eat only. This is definitely a female. Um, this one uh, now prefers the geckos, which is really sort of surprising. Uh, um, I'm sure if I gave it a live mouse, uh, it would eat a live hopper, but it, for whatever reason, really doesn't like frozen thawed uh, uh, mice. So uh, it has switched to geckos, and uh, I went try to switch it back. Uh, this is a constant battle for me here at the lair. Um, snakes have a, a particular uh, favorite food and you know, sometimes I think they get bored of it uh, and will we'll switch back to something else and uh, uh, something that it, I don't prefer to feed like, you know, frozen thought geckos uh, uh, because they're more expensive than mice and more difficult to procure and you know I have the unsavory uh, uh, job of, of euthanizing a bunch of uh, geckos which I like geckos, I like lizards, I don't, this is why I really am hesitant to, you know, I don't feed King cobras and stuff, and other snakes. I uh, get them transitioned to, uh, you know, something easier and more plentiful like rodents, uh, than uh, having them just dine on other snakes. Okay, so now uh, time to put this little gal or guy back in there and yeah echis really don't like to be manipulated there you are you're home you look like you're you're due for a shed there you go you're home you can go back and chill out and I'll I'll feed you later so again these these were all hatched and stuff and uh, um, we Put a minimum amount of water in the cage because you'll see on this next cage uh, when you overflow it it can really mold up really fast I mean that didn't take much time at all although I know you're frightened um, we're trying to make this as a friendly process as possible but being your echis you're not going to uh, go with the flow are you huh they don't like being hooked out nope so we will attempt not to play snake hockey with an Echis today. Again, these are all from the same litter, same mom. I don't know who the dad was. This one looks to be a male and for safety reasons we're going to put the lid on while I clean up their bin. All right, this one's ready to go back in. Um, Lori and I had a discussion off camera because it's easy to spill the water from the water dish uh, and that makes a mess in the cage. Um, we decided that we'll just do on a regular basis a couple times a week, spray down the walls and uh, this way uh, they're mostly scale sippers anyway, they'll get hydrated. Uh, off the wall so to speak and uh, this way we it's very easy that when you move the cage in and out it's very easy to uh, uh, to spill water like you can see here um, all right so this one needs to come out hello how are you nice to see you. oh not so nice to see me huh well I'm sorry but uh, we'll put you over here uh, on a temporary basis and we'll clean out your cage. Again, they don't like the slippery surface. Uh, I've got some other 
wild caught animals that I'll crossbreed this with, uh, uh, depending on what sexes they turn out, to produce some offspring that are unrelated because here at the lair, unless I have no other option, uh, I don't inbreed my animals like other keepers might. Um, I try to give them uh, genetic diversity in this way it's a much healthier bloodline that we, we move forward uh, uh, into other collections when the animals uh, end up at different zoos, venom labs, or even some private collectors. Although there's not many private collectors here in the U.S. that like Echis. Um, and that's unfortunate because they're generally really sort of easy, easy to keep. Um, they're very beautiful little snakes. They're, of course, they're very irascible and, and very easy to, to anger, but um, overall, they're, uh, they're relatively easy to keep and handle. Um, one interesting thing about uh, Echis is uh, there's, uh, I think, five or six species now. All those species, except one, lay eggs. And only one gives live birth, and that's uh, Echis sochirukii. Um, and boy, do they give live birth. Mm -hmm. uh, the f one female I had uh, dropped 39 babies, and believe me, um, having to deal with 39 little baby Echis um, and get them all feeding is quite the uh, task. Um, and on top of that, you really can't store them together uh, for very long because if they're hungry enough, uh, they see movement, they will try to eat each other, which is never a good thing if you're trying to grow them up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want them to eat, but you don't want them to eat their sibling, uh, and unfortunately that, that happens, and that happens with a lot of snakes. That's why, you know, I get snakes uh, out of the mother's cage as quickly as possible and into their own bin. Uh, so we don't have accidental or on purpose cannibalism take place. And uh, we, can, uh, we can grow up as, uh, as many as possible. So we're going to put this one back in its bin. Hopefully it will be cooperative. Fairly cooperative, if you ask me. I mean, I, that went as well as uh, as it gets. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, uh, the hatchling leucogasters, and then there's two wild caught individuals that we have to do next. And I save those for last because those being captive born are absolutely completely free of any intestinal parasites because uh, uh, they haven't been in the wild. Um, hello. No, I'm not going to feed you right now. Uh, these that are from the wild that are about the same size, about yearling size. This looks like a female. Um, you know, they were wild fed and I don't often, unless I see some serious uh, problems. Uh, I don't worm the snakes, uh, although that would be fairly easy to do and straightforward with um, with uh, different worming agents I have uh, on hand. Um, but unless they show symptoms, of, you know, I see definite parasites and worms and stuff, or they're losing weight or have, you know, a watery mucusy stool. 
Um, I don't treat them, uh, although relatively easy to trade. It's done by weight, and uh, uh, it's easy to calculate the dose. There's a couple of books that are available uh, on reptile parasites and how to treat them. Uh, those are on the internet, on Amazon, and you can buy them. Uh, I have both of them in the collection. Uh, uh, I don't use them much anymore because I bought Dr. Douglas Mader's uh, book on reptile medicine and surgery. It's a very expensive textbook, a couple hundred dollars, but it covers uh, all sorts of ailments, maladies. Uh, it has a whole pharmacopoeia inside, giving different doses and uh, uh, different uses of uh, different classes of drugs that, that the snake could use. And certainly, um, uh, you know, antiparasitics are, are common. This guy didn't have a piece of uh, cork, did he? No, I don't think so. All right. Well, if you feel comfortable, I will uh, I will skip the other room and get a piece of cork part. So why I like to throw a little piece of cork bark in there is to give them a place to hide and also give them a place to rub their uh, faces on and bodies during the shedding process. So let's uh, go ahead and put this little critter back. Oops, I'm sorry, but if you're going to be a, a, a limp noodle, noodle uh, this will happen. So we will take the unceremoniously dumping the snake back in the bin <laughs> trick again, which works almost every single time. As you can see against the sandy substrate, they would uh, blend in pretty well. So you're home, you're good. So now we'll do the other one, but I don't, I couldn't find a second piece of cork bark. Uh, so we're gonna pause here until I can get one. Okay, so the last Echis Hoopagaster, and uh, this one is one that I took a picture of. Uh, it was sitting in the water dish, uh, and as you can see, it, it put a lot of substrate in there, but I poured a little bit of water in, and it started drinking in the water dish. So um, they like them because it's something to curl up and make them feel more secure. So come on, come on, come on. I want to go to the bin. There we go. So we'll remove the water dish. Now, Echis uh, causes more snake bite deaths in the world than all the other snakes put together because they're quite prolific. Uh, and they have this tendency to hang around where people live because people make the best habitats and people being a bit messy and dirty, you know, leave lots of morsels of food that uh, the Echis's prey would dine on, which Echis love to eat centipedes and scorpions. Uh, so they're good to have around in, in your campsite uh, 
uh, in sub-Sahara Africa to keep some of the very deadly scorpions out of your tent, but at the same time, uh, one would not really want uh, echis crawling around in your tent, and this is why so many locals uh, are bitten by these, and, and this snake will kill you. This, is, this happens to be a male, I can see that from here. Um, although, you know, he seems to be relatively calm at the moment and not acting terribly echis like uh, which is nice, and probably because he's a male, and we've already discussed many times my opinion about male snakes versus female <laughs> snakes. But, you know, that's pretty chill for an echis. Hi there, dude. Huh? Right now, these two wild caughts are, are really dining uh, on live hoppers. There you go. You're back home, and I actually even added a piece of furniture for you. Again, piece of cork bark. Doesn't have to be big. Something to hide behind, and certainly another rough surface to, uh, to shed against. So, since I definitely identified that as a male, I will uh, label that cage as such. And uh, this will conclude our fun with uh, the echis and the small bins. We've got echis over in the big bins that need some care, but we'll do that another time.